Water quality in Manawatu has been the subject of sometimes bitter debate. It was brought into the public arena when Horizons Regional Council attempted to address the decline in the quality of rivers and streams in the catchment. Outspoken critic of dairy polluters, Dr Mike Joy, is a senior lecturer in freshwater ecology at Massey University. He's monitoring fish species to determine the health of Manawatu waterways. A recent report that of 3,000 lowland rivers, you know, more than 90% of them you'd get sick in if you went for a swim in them. Dairying is the biggest cause, without a doubt. That's where it's coming from. You know, there's two biggest impacts, sediment and nutrients. And the sediment is from hill country farming mostly, a bit from dairy farming, but the other nutrient problem that causes all of the it's not the nutrients themselves that are the problem, but the effects that it has on the river with dropping, you know, growing huge amounts of algae and then oxygen levels dropping, and that's the big impact from dairy farming. This is electrofishing. Basically, most of our native fish are benthic, so they sit on the bottom of the stream and uh, they're hanging out just in the, in the stones and the substrate, mostly in the faster flowing bits. So the only way that you can catch them is to give them a bit of a jolt. You can tell a lot about the health of the river by what kind of fish communities there. So I've developed a thing called the Index of Biotic Integrity as part of my scientific work that's used by about half of the regional councils in New Zealand now, where you can go and take a sample of the fish in the river, you plug it into this model, it gives you a score and it tells you how healthy that river is in comparison to the rest of them. We fished here for a good 10 minutes and we caught two juvenile eels, two shortfin elvers. So We've got two species of eel, longfin, shortfin. The shortfin's tough, you know, it can handle pretty rough conditions. It'll live in, in sewage treatment ponds and that kind of thing. We didn't pick up the longfin eel, which is much more sensitive. We didn't pick up any other fish species here apart from those two eels. This is typical of a degraded lowland stream. We've got a whole lot of things going on here. Part of it is sediment. The other thing that's going on is all the nutrient. You've got a wastewater treatment plant, You've got a whole lot of dairy farms, a whole lot of farming, horticulture, all sorts of nutrients going into this river here. The response of the river is to grow algae. That's bad in one sense in that you lose habitat. There's nothing for the invertebrates or the fish to live in because it's all got a coating of slime over the top of it. But the biggest issue is it sucks the oxygen out of the water. So at night time, three or four o'clock in the morning, there's no oxygen left in the river here. So this. One of the big controversies around the Manawatu River was this worst, worst in the West. You know, it was supposed to be the worst river in the West. That comes from a study at, at, on the Manawatu River up through the gorge at Hopelands Road, where the river comes out of a lot of dairy country and there's huge amounts of algae, huge amounts of nutrient. When the oxygen levels were looked at over a 24 hour period, they're dropping down to 40% dissolved oxygen at 4 o'clock in the morning. Nothing can live. Your technician comes along from the regional council at 10 or 11 in the morning, puts his sensor in the river, and it says 80, 90, 100% oxygen. So he goes away, oh, it's all good here, there's not a problem. The gap between the lowest dissolved oxygen and the highest dissolved oxygen over a 24 hour period, you can calculate gross primary productivity from it. This is the scale that said one to three is a healthy river, three to six is a, you know, it's getting borderline. Anything above seven is an unhealthy river. The Manawatu River at Hopelands Road scored 107. That is off the scale. That is the one that caused the headline because nowhere else in the world has that level been found. This is the Mungori stream. In a couple of minutes of easy fishing here, we picked up, you know, there was a couple of fish in the net almost every time that we did it. They, you know, just extremes in density. The difference being that here, the sediment hasn't filled up all those spaces. So now there's a whole lot of spaces for them to live in. But the other thing is the really obvious difference in water quality as well here. It's cooler because there's more riparian shade. There's much less nutrients. So the, the oxygen levels, if we looked at the oxygen levels over a 24 hour period, which we've done, they flatline. They don't oh, change. They're yeah. around 100% right the way through. Oh, wow. There's one for tea. What the fish are telling us is this is a really healthy river. And that's what we could have if we took care of the number of stock units that are on there and how much of their, of their effluent gets into the river. So this is, this is the, the, the extreme end. And we've, I've done some really accurate modelling on these fish that we caught here, and they're, they're missing from 85% of the catchment that they should be at. This is a kuaro. 
So it's a galaxid, it's one of the white bait. So when you're eating a white bait fritter, you could well be eating one of these. And they live in those really fast flowing parts of the river. The other species that we've got here, this is redfin bully. If you've got one of these in your stream, you could drink out of it. They only seem to want to live in healthy, clean streams. The last but not least is, ow, it just bit me, a long finial. This one's probably maybe three or four years old. See, it's very keen on biting me. Long fin eels are becoming very rare. You'll find them in the mountains, you'll find them in the clean streams. Dams are a problem and water quality is a problem for them as well. Manawatu dairy farmer Murray Holdaway is involved in the Dairy Link project. It's helping farmers understand the opportunities and limitations of the natural resources on their properties, like soils, waterways and livestock. We milk just over 400 cows in the farm in the balance area here. I'm a fifth generation on part of the farm and my son's home share milking now, he's a sixth generation so we're in it for the long haul as well. We don't do great production here, uh, the farm has is, is, um, got um, some disadvantages, uh, it goes up into some quite steep hills and, and has a, a large river frontage as well as uh, being divided up by uh, a number of little streams but our focus is on being a viable business. New Zealand at the moment needs every export dollar we can get. Dairy farming is doing that for us, so it's not for a scientist or for a farmer to make the decision as to where we should sit on that spectrum. In the end, it's the community that needs to make that decision, and I guess that's the role of the regional council and the central government to try and create a, a balance and a compromise in there so that we don't destroy one or the other. What I'm doing is doing everything that is practical and obvious at this stage uh, to try and improve the water quality. Things like building this bridge so that the cows are not in there. Things like fencing the streams off and having some riparian planting. Things like investing in, in an irrigation system and a storage facility so that we're only irrigating to land during the drier seasons. Dairy Link is a collaborative approach between Dairy New Zealand, Dairy New Zealand are driving it, uh, Horizons are on that committee as well, um, uh, Fonterra, Federated Farmers and it's, it's, it's just dealing with some of the bigger issues uh, around um, consents and compliance and trying to get a national view of those issues rather than a regional one so that we can have uniformity across the nation. We have made significant progress within the industry from what I hear farmers talking about now you know the environmental aspects are becoming a part of their everyday management decisions and I think that's all you can ask whereas um, in the past they've been very much based on, on production uh, decisions. Um, and so, um, and, and, and there's, there's a, a significant amount of capital now being put into mitigating uh, environmental um, damage on dairy farms. Uh, and so, so it's all positive. I think we're moving in the right direction. We're, we're not there yet though. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.